on our Independence Line. John, good morning for Michael Schwer. Uh, good morning. Uh, I, for one, am sick and tired of all these uh, Jews coming on C-SPAN and other stations and pushing us to go to war against our Muslim friends. They're, they're willing to spend the last drop of American blood and treasure to get their way in the world. They have way too much power in this country. People like Wolfowitz and Fife and the other neocons that Jewed us into Iraq, and now we're going to spend the next 60 years rehabilitating our soldiers. I'm sick and tired of it. John in uh, Franklin, New York. Any comments? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, of course, American foreign policy is eventually up to the American people. Uh, the w One of the big things that we've not been able to discuss in this country for the last 30 years is our policy toward the Israelis. Uh, whether we want to be involved in fighting Israel's wars uh, in the future is something that Americans should be able to talk about. They may vote yes. They may want to see their kids killed in Iraq or Yemen or somewhere else to protect Israel. Uh, but the question is we need to talk about it. Ultimately, Israel as a country is of no particular worth to the United States. It doesn't you mean strategic uh, strategically? We have no, they have no resources we need. Their manpower is minimal. Um, their association with us is um, a negative for the United States. Now, that's, that's a fact. Uh, what you want to do about that fact is entirely different. But to, for anyone to stand up in the United States and say that our support for Israel doesn't hurt us in the Muslim world or our support for Hosni Mubarak's dictatorship doesn't hurt us is to just defy reality. Today I had the privilege of welcoming the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, for his second visit to the United States Capitol. You know, the American people consider Israel our most cherished ally and we her closest friend and guardian. As we met, Israel lives under the shadow of a, of a threatening neighbor seeking nuclear weapons. But remarkably, this administration seems intent on focusing on a controversy over construction in undisputed areas of Jerusalem instead of the threat of a nuclear Iran. As I just told the Prime Minister, I never thought I'd live to see the day that an American administration would denounce the state of Israel for rebuilding Jerusalem. If the world knows nothing else, let it know this. America stands with Israel. As the president meets with Prime Minister Netanyahu today, I urge the president to stop all this talk about settlements in Jerusalem and start focusing on isolating a threatening and menacing and rising nuclear has Iran. Expired. The American people and the American Congress in both parties support the state of Israel. Shalom, Israel Republicans. I'm Governor Mike Pence. It's a great honor for Donald Trump and I to stand together with you tonight in support of Israel. And I'm deeply humbled to be speaking to you at this historic time and with all of you there in that special holy place of Jerusalem, the eternal home of the Jewish people. Over the course of this campaign, many people have asked me why our ticket stands so strongly with Israel. Donald Trump and I stand with Israel because Israel's fight is our fight, because Israel's cause is our cause. We stand with Israel for the same reasons good people everywhere stand with Israel. We stand with Israel because her cause is just, because her values are our values, and because her fate is our fate. Israel is not just our strongest ally in the region. As I've said for so many years, Israel is our most cherished ally in the world. Currently, Israel lives under the ominous shadow of a threatening neighbor who seeks to wipe her off the face of the earth. Yet Donald Trump and I understand that Israel is not hated by her enemies for what she does wrong, but rather for what she does right. Like the United States, Israel is hated by terrorists and the failed states that support them. She is hated by too many progressives because she is successful and her people are free. As Israel takes the curses, the slanders, and lies of the world and turns them into blessings, the real question is how could any good person not stand with Israel? Let the word go forth from Jerusalem, the eternal undivided capital of the Jewish people and the Jewish state, that Donald Trump and I are proud to stand with Israel.
The American people are proud to stand with Israel. And should Donald Trump and I have the privilege of serving this great nation? If the world knows nothing else, the world will know this. America stands with Israel. And this may be you don't want to hear, I don't know. And I certainly don't want to hurt you on your show. You have one of the best. You're fair. But I believe that Israel has a powerful stranglehold on the American government. They control both members of the House, the House and the Senate. They have us involved in wars of which we have little or no interest. Our children are coming back in body bags. Our nation is bankrupt over these wars. And if you open your mouth, you get targeted. And if they don't beat you at the poll, they'll put you in prison. Good to see you again. Wonderful to see you, Mr. Prime Minister. Good Thank you so you. much Thank for you. greeting me and spending a little bit of time. It's a pleasure. Uh, from my 12 years on Capitol Hill, uh, from my two years uh, leading the great state of Indiana, I can say that uh, support for Israel in the United States has never been stronger. Uh, and the strong and broad and bipartisan support uh, for the state of Israel I know will be reflected uh, in decisions that our Congress makes in the months ahead uh, to uh, preserve uh, the support the United States provides to Israel, uh, to ensure uh, that uh, Israel uh, is able to uh, uh, enter into negotiations uh, to achieve defensible borders, uh, and, uh, and, and secure its own peace and security in the years ahead. Uh, and I just, uh, uh, I, would, uh, I would pledge to you from my vantage point in the heart of the heartland as well that uh, not just during this very special time of the year for people who share my tradition, but all throughout the year, uh, that um, the appreciation uh, for the state of Israel and the partnership between the state of Israel uh, and America has never been stronger uh, and from the heart of the heartland, I say thank you. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for welcoming us back to this great country. And if the world knows nothing else, it will know this. America stands with Israel. begin, though, with today's closed-door meeting between the President and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, just over an hour from now, the two leaders are going to discuss Israel's decision to build housing units in East Jerusalem, an area Palestinians want as the capital of their proposed state. These developments seen as a direct provocation uh, in this debate. The Obama administration opposes this development. Netanyahu, however, will not budge. The Jewish people were building Jerusalem 3,000 years ago, and the Jewish people are building Jerusalem today. Jerusalem is not a settlement. It's our capital. Well, this international dispute has now become a domestic political issue here in the U.S. Take a listen. I never thought I'd live to see the day that an American administration would denounce the Jewish state of Israel for rebuilding Jerusalem. The time has come for this administration uh, to stop bullying Israel. Um, are you seriously suggesting that the U.S. should be indifferent to whether Israel survives? I think, I think that's exactly what I'm suggesting. How could that possibly be when Israel is the closest ally and when it's the only democratic state in the region? Well, I think democracy is, a, is, a, is sort of a silly foreign policy goal, sir. We've proved that pretty much in Afghanistan. We why, is it, why is it silly when we've shown that democracies are less likely to wage war on each other I, than non-democracies? Uh, Mr. Sebastian, that's an academic school. I think it's very here, strong here at Georgetown. Democracies are... But do you have any counter-argument to that? Well, I would... Uh, just uh, four years in the United States when the world's two greatest democracies have managed to kill 640,000 of their own people. Uh, democracies will fight just as other people will. But it's not the business of the United States, never has been, to install democracy anywhere. We don't do it very well. We do it ridiculously badly, as a matter of fact. And not to preserve countries that have democracies? I don't see any Why reason. Not? You know, that, that, that's a canard that's very popular, that countries have a, a right to exist. Countries have a right to defend themselves. And, and your accusation that Israel and its, its representatives corrupt U.S. politics? No, not at all. 
I, I very seldom talk about Israel at all. I said uh, pro-Israeli Americans. Right, pro-Israeli Americans. What's your evidence for saying they corrupt U.S. politics? <laughs> Look what they did to Ambassador Freeman in the past couple of weeks. Is that corruption of U.S. politics? It, that, that's a lobby is. doing what a lobby does, isn't is that, it? Well, uh, that, that may be the case. Well, then I would argue that the, the fact the that... The tobacco lobby does what it does, the gun lobby does what it does, and the Israel lobby, whichever of the many groups it embraces, does what it does. The difference that's, on, that's the lobby system, isn't it? Uh, well, none of the other lobbies you mentioned, sir, uh, do things that eventually uh, rebound to America's uh, harm. The Israeli lobby does exactly that. And what exactly has the harm been? What the Israeli lobby has done is to convince Americans, or have tried to convince Americans, that Israeli interests are identical with U.S. national security interests. A lot of people would believe that to be true. Well, a lot of people are foolish then, and leading America into defeat. Michael Shoya, thank you very much indeed. I love Israel.